Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to K News for week 11, 2017. This week will be enriched by two or maybe three launches, but before I jump into that, let me first mention that Blue Origin shared a new animation of the new Glen Rocket and alongside that some details about its specs. However, I will do a special about that amongst other things, but you can find the link to the animation in the description. Right now it is a little unclear what exactly will happen because Falcon 9, which was supposed to launch on Sunday, was delayed on the Tuesday. Since I already covered Falcon 9's launch last week, I will simply tell you about the others. Let me begin with Delta 4. There is no definitive schedule as I speak because it gets all mixed up in Cape Canaveral right now. Delta was supposed to fly on Tuesday but gets shifted back because Falcon 9 got delayed as well and will still launch first. However, there was or still is a booster issue on Delta 4 which has to be resolved first. Right now it won't fly earlier than March 17th. Delta 4 will launch at some point hopefully this week in its M plus 5.4 configuration. 5 stands for the 5 meter wide fairing which harbors a satellite called WGS9 or Wideband Global SATCOM. And 4 stands for the amount of solid strap on boosters mounted on the core stage which is the maximum for Delta 4. The next bigger version would be the Delta 4 Heavy. On top is as usual the Delta Cryogenic second stage which will also be used in the smallest space launch system setup called Block 1, currently developed by NASA. The United Launch Alliance likes its rockets well done, so Delta 4 will be covered in flames before it clears the tower. If you see it live, that's no reason to worry. Shortly after that it will turn east of the ocean and burn sideways to inject its payload onto a super synchronous transfer orbit. This means the apoapsis will be higher than a geosynchronous altitude of 35,000 km. In the case of WGS, it will be around 44,000 km. Its final orbit will still be geosynchronous, but launching it a little higher initially will make it easier for the satellite to circleize its orbit on its own. WGS is part of a constellation of communication satellite, and this will be the third I cover, but is of course the ninth to launch in total. The original constellation consists of six satellites, which are now complemented with more modern spacecraft, which will ultimately replace their predecessors once their lifetime comes to an end in a few years. The first one was by the way launched 10 years ago on an Atlas V. Once Delta's upper stage has finished its second burn, it will release WGS9 and perform a third burn. This one will push its periapsis into the atmosphere, where it will re-enter and partly burn up to avoid becoming space debris. The remains will crash into the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and East Asia, somewhere over the rainbow, uh, I mean Northern Mariana Islands and Guam. These folks over there might get a spectacular firework, 12 hours after liftoff. The next rocket to launch is Japan's H2A on March 16th from Tanegashima. The launch window opens at 1 UTC, which is in the morning locally. H2A propels itself using a hydrogen and oxygen core stage and two strap-on boosters. It's actually quite similar to the Delta IV, just a little bit smaller, but can nonetheless lift almost exactly the same payload. This is mostly due to the relatively big boosters, which deliver more thrust and burn 30 seconds longer than their Delta IV counterparts. More boosters is a very Kerbal philosophy. On top H2A is a secretive payload for the Japanese reconnaissance office called IGS Radar 5, where IGS stands for Information Gathering Satellite. Instead of going east, H2A will turn south for a polar orbit. I initially thought it would be a sun synchronous one, but sunrise in Japan is currently at 6 in the morning and the rocket will launch no earlier than 10 am. This is relevant because a sun synchronous orbit follows the Terminator to stay lit 24 7, so it would launch right at or just before dusk. Anyways, the upper stage will do a 10 minute long burn, bringing the satellite directly into its final orbit without having to reignite the engine for a second burn. Now in the end a shout out to my patrons who support me on Patreon. Thanks a lot guys and if you want to contribute as well simply follow the link in the description or in the end of the video. Okay, that's it for this week and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.